I would like to welcome everyone. I'd like to thank you for um, accepting to present the results of the projects on local infrastructure and transmit recommendations and positive experiences about the importance of good governance for the purpose of sustainability. Everyone watching us through Zoom uh, application will be able to ask questions through our chat and we will read them in the end. Our guests today are representatives of the local self-government from Valjevo, Nena Brankovic, advisor for project management from Shabbat, Anna Marinkovic, head of the Department for Social Affairs. Good morning. Zagobica Nenad Milosavljevic, director of the uh, uh, project planning and management public company. From Meroshina, Jovica Markovic, assistant president of the municipality for economic development. And Filip Nikolic, member of the project team. Hello. We have also Jana Stankovic, representative of the uh, EU delegation, and Olivera Kostic, project manager of the EU PRO project. Um, on behalf of the host of today's panel, I'd like to present Natasha Ivanovic, who is dealing with social inclusion issues on behalf of the Swiss PRO program. Good morning, Natasha. And today's facilitator is Dragan Matej Bodenovic, good governance advisor on behalf of the Swiss PRO program. Before I give floor to him, I will just present a, uh, some facts about the results of the, the local infrastructure projects implemented for the purpose of improving the living conditions through improving the public infrastructure and improving social cohesion. As we know, the EU has supported with 4.4 million euros 37 projects of local infrastructure and local self-governments had added uh, 1.6 million and their efforts to contribute to their successful implementation. The topic of this panel is uh, a good governance for the purpose of uh, um, uh, sustainability. And I can say that all 37 projects contain all the three aspects of sustainability, social, environmental, and economical. The contribution of all projects to social sustainability is uh, evident because in this project, in, uh, over 162,000 direct beneficiaries uh, got an improved uh, working conditions. We, uh, we also in, ensured uh, social inclusion for the vulnerable groups. Over 80% of the project dealt with new water work and so sewage system, energy efficiency, and using renewable energy sources that not only influence the reduction of the maintenance cost, which contributed to economic sustainability, but also in the ecological sense, they contributed to reducing emissions and pollution. Implementation of the good governance, a principle uh, in synergy with the Swiss Pro program financed by the Swiss government and also implemented by UNOPS, we also added additional elements which contributed that our interventions be not only bricks and mortar to quote my colleague. So I'd like to ask our today's facilitator, what are the additional elements and what is good governance, governance and why is it important? Thank you. This question has an answer in itself. Good governance is something that is uh, goes without saying. Uh, all the countries in the world have a, a good governance system that is a governance system, but if it is good, governance is a question. So I will not go into a deep analysis of this, but it is a process where a community and within this community, there is the local self-government, its authorities, its resources as a stakeholder, and also they're uh, developing local policies, implementing those policies, development programs. 
All other stakeholders are the citizens, which have their organizations which participate in uh, policy making and implementing policies. These are also companies, everyone uh, who participates in the development of a territory through uh, through cooperation can be said as, uh, to be stakeholders in governance. We are trying to professionalize the pu public administration. Uh, 11 years ago, when UNOP started dealing with the issue of good governance, When they started to deal with good governance issues, there were very few interlocutors who understood fully what it was about, because these are abstract topics. Um, these topics are very specific and very applicable. We uh, try to think of how these academic categories as transparency, participation, non-discrimination, equality, effectiveness, efficiency, to, to turn them into specific action, um, uh, to have a common approach of UNOPS to link them to project activities, including activities dealing with infrastructure projects. In addition to good governance, these activities were intertwined with other uh, topics like uh, uh, issues, how the project activity affects positively, hopefully, and if it is affects negatively, we wanted to prevent that to, to uh, vulnerable groups, so, so their social inclusion, their gender equality, and um, empowering women's uh, political and economic rights and approach to access to resources. And this is the characteristic of our approach. And as UNOPS, we implemented this in the program financed by the EU. That is the program we are talking about today. Our colleagues today from the local self-government governance um, directly participated in the implementation of infrastructure projects which significantly contributed in their own way to the empowerment of resources with which the, the local sub government uh, contributed to the improvement of public services. And also other 34 infrastructure projects uh, gave equally good results. But today we will deal with this approach the results of these four infrastructure projects. The entire intervention that we devised and intertwined in the implementation of the project uh, reflected the main uh, uh, attitude of all the donors also implying the funds from our, our state. These are the changes that need to happen in the uh, approach to uh, executing public office, providing public services, improving uh, transparency, accountability towards the citizens. This is um, a brief introduction for everyone who are thinking about the good governance uh, principle as a uh, support to changing the uh, way of thinking, the changing behavior. This will help things change in practice how public office is executed in all ways in, in the local self-government. Today with us, um, we have representatives of local self-governments who practically implemented some of the principles in their infrastructure projects implemented in their local community. The first here is the example from Valjevo, and I'd like to give floor to my colleague Nenad Branković to give us an introduction as to 
what the intervention was, and then we will discuss about the sustainability of this project and the application of the good governance and sustainability principles. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the City of Valio, I'd like to welcome all the participants, representatives of the UPRA program, the owners, uh, the EU, representatives of the Swiss Pro program, and the representatives of UNOPS, with whom we had exceptional cooperation during the implementation of our project. The City of Valio implemented the project entitled uh, Living Together, Improving the Sewerage System in the Roma community of Bayer. And the key activities uh, refer to the construction and reconstruction of the storage system in this Roma community, uh, applying the good governance principle in the infrastructure project. We built in the new sewer system in Milova Naglišić, Aleksa Šantića, Pogončeva, and Šumadinska street. We put the main pipe there and also connections for the users. The total length of the new sewerage network is 636 meters without house connections. And the city sewerage is 580 meters and the pressure sewerage 49 meters. Connections to the storage system was executed at the crossroads of Milova Naglišića and Irčan Inova Street and house connections were introduced to the manholes and only when it was not technically feasible we connected to the main sewerage pipe and in agreement and good cooperation with the users of the project the house connection were uh, laid until to their private plots where they later connected to the system. Total number of house connections was 48. The reconstruction of the existing uh, the storage was done in Popandria Street and Vailovska Street. The users were connected to the main storage network and um, they were connected to the public utility company Vodovod Valjevo, Valjevo Waterworks. After completing the works, all the streets were re rehabilitated and as required by the inhabitants, they insisted the, for the pavement to be restored and we had good cooperation and did it. We had good cooperation with the users throughout. I will tell you more about it later. Every uh, All other streets were also rehabilitated uh, and, uh, as the um, new asphalt was laid. A total area is 3,400 square meters. Uh, in this infrastructure project, we apply the good governance principle through greater participation of citizens in the process of decision making about the project, non discrimination and equality, with the improvement of local regulations, especially in the part referring to sustainability and maintaining and managing the systems. Um, and interesting the tasks to the public utility company, which uh, was tasked by the Valjevo municipality to further manage the system, maintain the system, and connect the new users um, and maintain and improve this service. I can also tell you that during the project, we really had um, good communication with the project users because this is a predominantly Roma community settlement. And before the start of the works, we had meetings with um, all the participants in the project, city administration, the project team, inspection department, and the UNOPS representatives, local community, and also the inhabitants, the users, we informed them about the project. 
i čuli povratne informacije. And got feedback from them they said uh, immediately for Bobonchova street that they wanted the old pavement to be restored they didn't want the asphalt uh, road so we agreed about the traffic regulations because there were challenges initially the works were supposed to last for three and a half months but we had uh, unpredicted works and then uh, the winter came and then in the end we had the epidemic the state of emergency so the works were prolonged to eight months, but um, we had intense and good cooperation with all the participants in the project, with the users in the field, with the local community. We tried to um, apply those good governance principles and to meet their demands, especially the participation in decision-making consultations and as to how to resolve the situation in the field. We try to meet their demands in the way that the streets are restored to their original condition or improved uh, through, for example, the asphalt, they, they, they got the, the uh, unpredicted problems that needed to be solved on the spot. And as we had the machines on, in, on the spot, we try to resolve as many issues as possible to improve the quality of life rates awareness about the importance of this new storage network to so that they enter the system that to, to pay for the storage system also a couple of, of sentences and then i'll um, take your questions and since we were already there we, we wanted to uh, cl clean this uh, area and uh, improve the lighting the the, the children's playground also had we had the agreement about better regulation of traffic there because the, an important road is going through this settlement uh, we intensely try to include the community and especially the roma community in this project so that it improves this uh, life in this community and we wanted to see which additional problems we could solve and help improve the quality of life of the inhabitants of this settlement. There's a question. Uh, citizen participation is very important and it gives additional legitimacy to all the activities undertaken in this case it was the reconstruction and the construction when you wrote the project proposal you had elements that would contribute to the sustainability of the project um, how much the citizens participated according to your estimate how much did it contribute to the sustainability of this project this is not a small community this is a settlement of a couple of hundred inhabitants to accept this reconstruction that lasted for different reasons longer than expected uh, did it additionally support the implementation? There were challenges in the field, a lot of them. Uh, I said in uh, my previous uh, speech, we planned the, the works to last three months, and then in the end, they lasted eight months. They were unpredictable circumstances and works. Mm, uh, the, the most part of the settlement did not have a storage network and connections so when the excavator started working the, we found a, a whole lot of things on the ground which um, was not there in the plans so your approach through participation you came to the support of the community which contributed to your governance, to the expectations of the community as to when this will be finished. Although you, you met with 
uh, various challenges. I can tell you that we tried through all these challenges in the field during the implementation of the project, during the works, to consult as much as possible the population and in the end, I think that they are satisfied. We had good communication. We had a, a conference in this uh, community where we included the representatives of this community. And in the end of the project, we developed a brochure where we presented all the activities, project outcomes, and we distributed them to inform the citizens in the entire settlement to, to inform every household. There was small, small dissatisfaction because um, especially when you have works in some streets that lasted much longer than expected. But we tried as much as possible to manage this uh, this cooperation and um, even we even uh, uh, try to satisfy the, the, the um, demands from uh, various representatives of the Roma co community. We also included representatives of the Center for Social Work and other institutions with uh, to help those who were in financial difficulties to resolve some of the other issues. This leads us to the topic uh, of another principle, which is the principle of discrimination and equality. This is an approach. We, uh, this is the access to basic public services, uh, basic to sewage and uh, water supply. And uh, even though a lot of was done, has been done uh, in the country over the last 10 years, the Roma community is still one of the most vulnerable communities in our society. I've understood that you made additional efforts as the town and uh, adopted a specific rule book which uh, having in mind the principle of non-discrimination allows uh, enables uh, connections to the grid at subsidized prices to the network uh, we still have not adopted a rule book but we are seriously working on it we're providing subsidies for paying uh, uh, electrical bills and rents for Rome uh, families and other socially vulnerable families owing to great cooperation with representatives of the Swiss Pro program we also got the rule book for uh, best, best practice example of a rule book uh, for uh, connections to sewage and water supply network. And as uh, the town administration, we are working on making it part of the official legislation of the town of Valjevo. This is the part of the regular procedure, but such a um, public policy of support to vulnerable groups was developed uh, to the level of the draft rule book, which is now uh, further in the procedure with the town administration. If you have something to add, or if we have a question or comment from our panelists, if not, thank you very much. Uh, Colleague Brankovic, thank you for your efforts and uh, congratulations on the results that you achieved through this project with your support and uh, through our sister program on applying good governance. Our colleague Anna Marinkovic from Shabbat uh, has the floor now. Hello, everyone, once again, before the town of Shabbat, I want to agree, say hello to all the panelists, representatives of the EU, representatives of the program, UNOPS, and our, my colleagues from other uh, 
self -gov local self-governments, uh, as well as everybody else who is present at this uh, panel. Within the uh, local infrastructure program, uh, the town of Shepherd uh, uh, implemented a project on the reconstruction of the uh, Sokolski Dome building, which is the place uh, where uh, the youth tradition and future uh, meet. This is something that uh, uh, the citizens of Shabbat uh, were eagerly awaiting. I want to say something about this, uh, this institution and why uh, this uh, facility is important for the citizens. Um, this building is within the town center on the corner of two streets. It was opened on the 3rd June in 1934 King, uh, by King Alexander Karadjordjevic. Uh, you can see on the bottom uh, photo uh, uh, what it was like when it was under construction and uh, then on the right uh, when it was uh, finished. The story about the center is the part of the story about the development of sports in Shabbat, which uh, has uh, been going on for over nine decades because uh, the big names of sport uh, in sports uh, started from here. The first uh, um, gymnast gymnasticians, uh, um, handball players uh, came and went uh, to the top of the world. Uh, from our uh, famous uh, handball club, Metalloplastica. Uh, this was a symbol of talent and youth, and as a memento, as a remembrance of the days that, should, uh, that we should uh, revive. Uh, it became the center of sports, uh, development of handball, football, athletics, uh, cycling, tennis, and chess activities, but also social activities. This was a youth center, not only for sports, but also culture. There were different events, uh, and this was actually... Um, making a model of, of values and upbringing for young people. In some difficult year, years, uh, due to financial crises and unresolved uh, property disputes, uh, this uh, building dilapidated and uh, it became unsafe to be in and from a monumental building and heritage became an abandoned uh, place and uh, ruins. You can look uh, and see in these photos uh, what uh, it was like at the moment it wasn't used anymore and it was uh, in ruins. But these uh, legal and property uh, relations were addressed and uh, the requirements uh, and conditions were achieved to start with the reconstruction. There was another important uh, obstacle because the building is um, complex and uh, substantial funds were required. When we prepared all the documents, we could not acquire uh, the resources to do this. In 2018, we applied for the local infrastructure program with the EU Pro, and we used uh, this opportunity and uh, provided the funds for the reconstruction of the building. Uh, project team members uh, had an uh, inception meeting and started with the implementation of the project. On this slide, you can see how we published in the media and social networks that we started with the reconstruction. You can see the comments and how people were happy about it. 
And so the public was following closely what was happening with the works. And then there were these, uh, we had those uh, preparatory and legally uh, required procedures. We were all very, the project team and the professionals from UNL Ops who helped us very much. We were very careful about each step, not to make any mistakes and finalize the project in time. During the uh, construction works phase, uh, we were monitoring this activity, overcoming issues which uh, are um, bound to, to occur because this is a very complex uh, endeavor of reconstruction and it is uh, also uh, included works on turning the attic into useful space. Uh, we can just move through the photos and see what the building looks like now. Before and after. About sustainability, uh, the town of Shabbats, immediately after reconstruction, uh, allocated resources in the local budget, considering that uh, uh, the building uh, hosts uh, field, a pitch that was not uh, uh, part of the application itself. So we uh, reconstructed it in 2020. So now the building and the open pitch are now in the full, fully used. If I can just uh, support your uh, uh, presentation with a few questions uh, regarding sustainability of um, uh, this uh, really impressive uh, uh, resource that uh, Shabbat's offered for use to its citizens again. When we're talking about the accountability principle and the access uh, or to rights, as uh, town, the town administration uh, developed two documents, uh, one with the National Museum and one with the tourist organization, could you say something about uh, this and uh, what was the purpose of these documents uh, that were developed with UNOP support and what they mean now for the sustainability of the renovated building? Dragan, uh, thank you for mentioning this. This is uh, something that I uh, was about to mention. In addition to this infrastructural part, uh, Shabbat, uh, uh, working on the culture and everything surrounding this institution, uh, agreed with the National Museum to put a standing exhibition within the uh, this building talking about the history and everything important of importance for, for this building. We clearly defined uh, obligations, duties regarding this exhibition and also regarding the assistance in hiring a curator who would uh, guide uh, guests or tourists through this exhibition. Uh, this is a, a principle of accountability in praxis. This is not a, just an uh, oral agreement, but uh, the process and the document regulating the manner in which the National Museum is participating in the work of this institution is essentially the principle of accountability in practice. The tourist organization, on the other the hand, uh, because uh, this uh, building is now a um, tourist uh, point, uh, and uh, the governing bodies of the tourist organization included the, this building in the tourist map of Shabbat and all promotional activities. Um, 
regarding this tourist uh, point will be followed. They made this pro uh, promotional material and uh, have included it in their offer. I just want to say something about the context of sustainability of the project. So another uh, document provided uh, uh, the town of Shabbat uh, and the tourist organization to improve their tourist offer, which will lead to economic and other effects for the broader community in the town, which is a concrete example on how sustainability of such an infrastructural project uh, is additionally ensured uh, through activities uh, uh, supporting the outcomes. I also want to say that we adhere to the non-discrimination and equality principles. Uh, at this moment, uh, the building uh, houses uh, the sports organization of uh, persons with disabilities and the tennis club for persons with disabilities. Uh, this is the only place in town where persons with disabilities can practice uh, sports and uh, work out. Uh, they even participated in the Paralympic Games. Our uh, table tennis team brought back home even medals. And now they can use the building for meetings, for sports. And also there was a cost effectiveness here where uh, in the building, these are uh, unions of sports organizations who did not have their own space uh, uh, for which the town used to uh, rent spaces and now they don't do anymore. They uh, can use the premises of the Sokolsky Dom and uh, this is now um, more efficient uh, use of uh, public funds. Yes, this is an added value of the overall implementation of this infrastructural project. So do we have any comments? Yes, I would like to add that uh, the example of Shabbat shows that one uh, building, one facility that has a uh, purpose, pre primary purpose for sports activities, also turns into a cultural institution connecting with the National Museum and for tourism. And as far as I know, the town of Shabbat is working still on the process of the best solution on the, for the management. Uh, because you additionally invested your own budget funds to improve the uh, pitch uh, next to the uh, building. To This could be a best practice for other local self-governments uh, for uh, transferring rights of management of a building of importance like uh, this one. Yes, Natasha, this is, that is true. Uh, the town of Shabbat uh, found important uh, uh, why uh, the building is important is uh, because we've uh, had a project going on for school children, preschool and uh, primary school children, a free program. We employ teachers, uh, uh, sports teachers who are currently un unemployed. We have uh, a lot of interested uh, children. Uh, and now we are using this building because the sports uh, hall is adequate. We will expand this program and include those children that are on the waiting list. Uh, Before this uh, project, uh, we had uh, deformities in preschool children, and now this is being addressed. Uh, during the last year, we couldn't implement it fully because of corona, but we're continuing with these activities. And why is this important? We are 
all uh, our services within the town administration are continuing doing this transparently, cost effectively, efficiently to organize the operations in the best possible time, to provide uh, free uh, time slots for those that need it. And we are at the verge of finding the best possible model. And I'm hoping that we will be a best practice example and uh, be able to assist other municipalities uh, to address their similar issues. Thank you very much. The next example comes from the municipality, Jagobica. You have the floor. Hello, I'm Nenad Milosavljevic. I come from the municipality of Jagobica. I would like to uh, greet all the present representatives of the EU Pro and Swiss Pro project programs, uh, my colleagues from local self-governments and all the viewers uh, uh, through the Zoom app. We applied with the stage of reconstruction of the health center in Jagobica due to financial difficulties. Uh, we have been reconstructing this uh, health care institution in uh, several stages. Uh, these were uh, installations for central heating and ce central air conditioning and uh, venting. Uh, we successfully completed this, introduced these new systems and uh, uh, improved the quality of stay in the institution. And after the finalization of all the activities, um, what uh, re we had some leftovers, some savings, uh, which we used to reconstruct uh, the interior of the uh, admittance of the part of the the part of the cleaning for admitting patients this uh, we uh, was used also for uh, checking of patients over the last year in our municipality we developed a rule book uh, on uh, procedure, on, uh, no, sorry, on uh, uh, treatment of vulnerable group uh, representatives uh, serving to uh, eliminate the discrimination against uh, these uh, members of our society. This uh, rule book is in effect. In addition, before we started with uh, any works, we uh, conducted a survey with the beneficiaries of the health center, uh, examining their satisfaction with the uh, premises and the services uh, uh, provided by health uh, care workers. After the completion of the project, we uh, conducted another survey to make sure that we improved. And uh, then uh, over 90% of uh, participants, uh, uh, of respondents, confirmed that we did. And this was essentially our project. Uh, uh, thank you, Nena. Uh, this is it is nice to see here that um, a project uh, that had the aim uh, to improve energy efficiency in the project, which uh, also includes uh, developing uh, regulations for using additional savings uh, achieved through energy efficiency. This happened in Meroshi, Natu, uh, where the school was uh, made more energy efficient. But uh, here, because there was uh, this was about air quality, and the clients, the patients of the health center, 
uh, also introducing the non-discrimination principle with the vulnerable groups getting priority treatment in accessing healthcare services including persons with disabilities pregnant women you young people under 15 years of age so they did not only uh, express satisfaction with the air but also with this part of the service provision which means that uh, an infrastructural uh, project can lead to some uh, more broader aspects uh, of satisfaction of direct uh, beneficiaries the rule book that you developed is an exceptional example not only of uh, anti-discrimination but also uh, the principle of equality because uh, this is a human right issue as well and um, also defining the way in which priority would be given to uh, persons and accessibility to doctors, you raise the level of uh, governance of this area, which is a principle of good governance in practice. And I would like to repeat um, that the application of good governance principle is practice is a uh, tangible and real thing. It is not something academic, uh, but you concretely contributed uh, to uh, the regulation of the situation and the clients know now uh, what to do and who has priority. This survey is also about accountability. A public institution such as the health center is partly within the mandate of the local self-government. We all know that um, also with the educational institution, Uh, everything is, uh, the governance is addressed. So now this survey showed us that the accountability towards clients is improved because it checks the satisfaction of uh, service users, and then we can implement corrective measures. This intervention was supported by the EU, and this raised the quality of infrastructure of the facility, of the building of a material resource that uh, Jagubica gained, but also essentially recognized the way in which it can improve its services and respond to what citizens, uh, which is the reason of uh, the existence of the health center, what they have to say on this topic. Topic. This is again the implementation of the application of the good uh, governance principle in practice, something tangible, something applicable in other situations too. And what I said again, what is uh, the main hope of all these interventions is to additionally uh, strengthen the results of these such projects and to have this uh, way of thinking, this approach in uh, public service provision I would just like to say that we are planning to conduct these surveys regularly, probably annually, to monitor further the situation in this uh, institution. That's right. Uh, and the local self-government can survey the satisfaction of citizen public services uh, to be able to intervene where resources are available and priorities lie. This can be used to assess other public services and the function of the local self-government. So this can be replicated uh, on other services as well. Thank you very much. Now we have the example of medicine and Mr. Javica Markovic, please take the floor. Good afternoon, I'm Javica Markovic. I come from Medicina Municipality. I'd like to welcome all the participants, especially the representatives of EU Pro and Swiss Pro, all the guests watching us. Our municipality implemented the project of Jastrebočki um, Partizani Primary School. Uh, this is one of the remote departments of the school. Why this school? It is situated in a settlement 
where 25% of the population are Roma. And the purpose was the inclusion of the Roma population in the preschool and school system. The school was built in the 90s, but due to lack of maintenance, it was quite devastated. The, the roof was leaking, the heating was inappropriate, and the uh, uh, curriculum was executed into shift. The project raised this to a higher level. We reconstructed the facade, the roof, yeah, and it stopped leaking. The classrooms were painted, new floors were laid, new hydro isolation was laid, and the, the new uh, the plumbing was done, and also the heating that was the biggest problem was now done. Uh, we are using pellet-based uh, heating, so we reduce the level of pollution. Uh, with regard to infrastructure, we had many problems in hydro insulation, but we resolved new joinery was done, which was a big problem because we had energy losses in heating because we had stoves, stove-based heating as if we were in the 19th century. So the, the school is attended by 150 students, a third of them are Roma. However, the second goal of the project, which, is, which was Roma inclusion, was we had the problem that Roma population at the beginning of the school year, they start school and then they drop out. In this project, this was uh, improved a lot because the infrastructure of the school was improved. We created new conditions for Roma children and their parents to start sending them to school. And we also try to animate the population. I have to thank Mr. Ramic, who helped us a lot about incentivizing Roma population to start sending children to school. So the effect already in the first year was quite visible. I have to stress that within our school, we had the preschool group, the kindergarten group, uh, from the Politarets institution. Uh, it was in an inappropriate kindergarten plan for Roma children. It was completely dysfunctional and it was out of use because Roma children and parents, but the parents didn't send children to this kindergarten. In this change, the infrastructural change, this was changed as well, the kindergarten and the preschool group uh, were joined to the preschool institutions of our municipality. I have to thank Natasha for helping us with the documentation. There, there was a lot of energy loss. The preschool group, which was within the primary school, was spending a lot of um, energy, electric energy, and uh, huge bills were coming in. Now that we resolved the heating, we introduced work in one shift every class has its own classroom and the part for the preschool group they have joined eating even the uh, physical education gym which can, can uh, be the heating can be switched on and off as as required so we have energy savings there as well uh, in the reconstruction of the school we managed to have every class have their classroom from the teacher's room that was used. We made a IT uh, classroom. The five uh, grades five to eight got interactive boards through the project, which improved the working condition a lot and facilitated work for the teachers. I understood that all these savings that you've made I just wanted to say that, I sorry, I'm sorry, yes, when we finished the implementation of the project during the reconstruction, the old furniture that was used 
kažem, I nije bilo za upotrebu više. Was really not for use anymore. And from the savings we made uh, in fuel and uh, the electricity bills, we bought a new furniture for all classrooms and for the IT classroom and part of the hallway, which was enormous. Whoever visited our school knows that. Uh, was um, uh, um, the partition was made and uh, and the teachers room was made, but in such a way that teachers can control children who are going out to have a break, so they have a clear overview of the children. I wanted to ask you because I understood that in the process of um, decision making as to how to spend it, the, the money. After the intervention of the EU in the reconstruction of the facility, you included the Parent Teacher Association, which is the participation principle in practice. Yes, we included the parents, uh, the Parent Teacher Association included also the representative of the Roma community. So we also had a representative of this community who was able to present the positions of this community, what these children needed to, to be able to attend school regularly. As I said, what, uh, how this whole story contributed when the new school started operating, the reconstructed school in the preparatory group, preschool group, we and also in the first grade, we had 23 enrolled children, 14 children of Roma nationality. Um, this year, we have somewhat less of them, but that is because uh, generations are overlapping. We have 17 enrolled in first grade and four Roma, but in the preschool group, and um, we have 38 children, which is the maximum uh, that can be taken there. One uh, fourth are Roma children who are coming regularly, who do not drop out. They are there every day. So um, those children that are in the preschool group um, led to the fact that they approved to uh, employ one teacher full time. This um, uh, process of joining two groups of preschool children, one that was within the project that the Red Cross was uh, doing and the other group. How did this go on? How did the local self-government support this process, which is directly involved the non-discrimination principle in access to public services? The uh, preschool institution Politaretsk contributed the most. Uh, their staff, their psychologists, pedagogue, teachers, they overcame this gap very quickly. And the local self-government, in terms of the uh, legal basis, the, they arranged for the decision connection to the network. Uh, the Roma children were now included in the network of kindergarten. That was the, this aspect, this raising uh, the level of accountability in practice, then the non-discrimination non principle in practice in a systemic way. And uh, I keep stressing this application in practice uh, uh, produces tangible results. This is a very specific story. And now, step by step, we are improving the level of order, level of predictability of life and work in the community. In any case, you can't deny that in this country, year by year, this level is raised uh, continuously. Are there any other questions? If you allow, what really uh, I was happy about, the local administration made an agreement with the school regarding regular reporting on savings through the improved um, energy efficiency. 
And through this agreement, they always know that all additional funds from the saving will always be invested in improving the teaching aids or anything that would improve the operation of the school, uh, modernization of the school. You didn't say, okay, report us, this will go into us, our budget, and then it was, it is at our discretion how we will spend the funds. We will use the funds to fill in the gaps in the budget. You really earmark these funds that they are allocated for improved uh, operation of the school, the teachers, and the, the, the school children. Thank you. Thank you. Just a minute. Uh, I wanted to say that generally for the employees of the local civil government, this was a huge experience when we talk about good governance. I remember the info session when the, the Dragon talked about good governance principles and tried to bring it closest, closer to us through a specific example. We didn't all think like that about each principle. And as we developed the project idea and had to apply it in practice, you realize that in order to apply the majority of this good governance principle, you are on the right track through good governance. This is my message to local self-government. Whenever they consider the process of uh, uh, governance uh, in any segment, they all should always go through all the principles because this is the good, the good way towards achieving this. Thank you for your remarks. This is the intention of the donors and us who are implementing the programs in the field to, to support local governments and to point to them without meddling into their expertise. These are diligent people who understand and know that what they are doing. We, we could see this well, to, through a study tour to Switzerland, which is a country. Uh, you can look into the World Bank indicators about the application of the good governance principle. They are you know, under all principles around 100. Uh, when our colleagues attended the study tour and uh, started to ask questions to their colleagues from local sub-government in Switzerland, in the end, their colleagues from Switzerland said, we never had such a group. Um, the expertise, the, the um, understanding of the, the local issues really exists. But it is up to the donor, to us, who develop the programs to support them in a thinking that is outside the algorithm. The law provides this and this. Let's go by the law. If it doesn't provide, then we stop. Many of our activities, as all your examples show, they are not banned by law, although they, it, it does not strictly provide this. This is how we need to work in order to raise the quality of life in this community, going to, uh, from the bottom up. If uh, the law doesn't strictly ban, we always have room to improve things. In Marishina, Zagubica, Valjevo, all the examples show, show exactly this. We believe that together we have achieved considerable results and contributed to positive changes in our country. And when we say that together, over the three and a half years, we implemented 95 projects worth 14 million euros, that uh, talks a lot about your efforts and commitment to the implementation. That would not have been possible without your great efforts and efforts of your teams and without of the efforts uh, of the infrastructure team, which is here around me. Uh, I have Viktor Veljevic, who was in charge of the detailed regulation project and the geographical information systems, Milan Koloshinov and Ivan Mladenovic, who uh, assisted uh, that the project be finished within the set deadlines and prices, Ivan Todorovic and Bojan Marcic, 
and Slobodan Derikonic without whose support the implementation of the grants would not have been possible. And I have to mention the entire UNOPS team that monitored and implemented no less important uh, activities on the administrative implementation of grants. I have to thank the, the good governance team headed by Anna Nedeljkovic, Dragan Nedeljkovic, Tata Sivanovic, Majdi Yusufovic, Edin Vašić, and Bojan, Petr, Bojan Petrovic, who implemented complementary activities and ensured the sustainability of the local infrastructure project. No less thanks uh, to the T communications team who enabled the, the results become and remain visible. And finally, the manager of the EU pro program, Olivera Kostic, who supported and directed us and contributed to the successful and recording in progress. I'd also like to thank to the EU Pro program in the segment that concerns the uh, detailed regulation plans and our support in cooperation with 18 local sub governments which um, uh, adopted the detailed regulations plan, which cover uh, 560 hectares of land. Nine plans. I refer to the development of industrial commercial zones, while the others provide basis for the preservation of the culture, historical heritage, and tourism development. What is important, especially, is that by developing this plan, we ensured investment potential of over 49 million euros, where 1.53 million have already been implemented and 1.75 million of euros in, in the, are in the phase of planning. What is especially important when it comes to the quality of the process that we ensured in cooperation with you is, is that we have been recognized as a program. We have received the recognition at the 29th Urban Planning uh, Fair and the three plans uh, were awarded special certificates. That represents a step forward in the urban planning process and improving the planning uh, process which for which I think we are uh, to be commended. I would like to introduce you to the invitation to uh, develop technical documents. Uh, let me first say that uh, while local self-governments uh, developed the uh, execution projects, which were the precondition for the expansion of the business infrastructure. The valuable projects was around 423,000 euros, out of which uh, 243,000 were provided to EU. The, this uh, established conditions for the development of industrial zone and technological parks. We, improved the business incubators, startups, congress uh, centers, and development of agriculture. Uh, in our projects, we ensured investments of um, worth 49 million euros, while the potential new investment amount to 20.400 million euros. Bella Palanca is the purpose made the project of uh, reconstruction of the Femit factory. Uh, we invested with the help of um, the government of the Republic of Serbia 725,000 euros and ensured uh, over 90 jobs uh, in production of uh, car parts. Topola municipality ensured ir irrigation of 300 hectares of uh, uh, lots through the investment uh, worth over 3.5 million euros. Local self governments, Bela Palanka, Kraljevo, Kučevo, Doljevac, Čačak, Topola, Knežovac, Niš Smederovo, Kragujevac, Vranje, and Vladimir Han also successfully implemented their projects. Good afternoon. I'd like to give you more details about the effect of the business infrastructure project, the, the invitation to, for the improvement of the business infrastructure through the EU Pro program, we had nine projects which considerably improved the conditions for investments in nine local self-governments, Bojni Kragovac, Paracim, Priboris, Medarevo, Sokobanja, Svilajnac, Šabac, 
and Ujica. These nine projects together enabled better business environment uh, conditions for attracting investments as well as increase in the number of employees and improvement of the living standard of the citizens. Through nine grants, uh, these nine local self-government, 630 hectares of land is covered with uh, basic uh, communal infrastructure. These are roads, uh, uh, public utility was improved, waterworks, so storage, electric, energy supply. This also improved the investment potential of these municipalities and local self-government. All of these nine local self-governments participated with 900,000 euros in these investments, while the program invested 5.4 million euros. All these investments are uh, considered to be long-term investments. The, their return on investment will be seen in an increased number of jobs in the future, economic growth, and finally, the uh, stopping of economic migration, because we start from the fact that the citizens need to have the opportunities to, to be employed in their local communities where they live, these nine local self-governments uh, totally implemented over 24 million hours of investments and um, 1,080 people are employed, have been employed after the implementation of this project. In the future, we have created conditions for additional potential 84 uh, million euro worth of investments, which would lead to an increase of employment and creating new 3,000 jobs in the future. And I'd just like to conclude that in the industrial zones where the projects were implemented, there is a large interest from uh, the local and international investors. What is especially important is the EU and then the support of the development of the geographical information system for uh, supported 24 local self governments. And that within this, they supported a uh, 19 project with 34 less local self governments, uh, eight of which included two or more partner municipalities. So we managed to cover quite a lot of territory where, uh, which was within our uh, program uh, coverage and included some of the systems important to uh, activate some potential uh, local self-governments uh, provided software and hardware support. In addition to this also, uh, that there was a significant level of development of uh, human resources, and we achieved a high level of the development of capacity developing certain thematic applications. Although, in addition to some standard things important to the establishment of the geographical information system, data sets. Uh, like a national register or harvest numbers. The key thing was something that is the uh, merit of our program, uh, the, uh, the development of thematic applications which raise the quality of services provided within these activities. So 134 applications were developed within four uh, areas. The first they refer to the development of investments, uh, business operations, and development of uh, insufficiently used um, uh, areas, brownfield and greenfield, uh, environment protection, reaction in business situations, and prevention of risks and energy efficiency, valorization of cultural, historical, historical heritage, uh, and what is the key for the segment of uh, uh, functioning of each. Uh, and municipality is the improved urban plan, plan planning. Within the segment uh, with the first development of human capacities, over 470 people have been trained, out of whom 170 women. So we had a considerable contribution in terms of developing capacities, and we ensured the sustainability of these uh, systems developed through our project. Better living conditions and working conditions for the population. EU supported it with additional 4.4 million euro and local local self-government with 1.6 million. Through the local infrastructure project, over 160 
to direct uh, users uh, receive improved working conditions um, uh, in the uh, uh, economic, social, and environmental sense, uh, sustainable projects, interventions on energy efficiency and use of uh, renewable energies, we contributed to the reduction of gas emissions and the costs of maintenance. Uh, applying the principle of good governance implemented through our partner program, SwissPro, we uh, built the capacities for sustainable and transparent governance of resources, social inclusion, and the way of uh, using the savings from uh, energy efficiency to be allocated for other needs. Through 37 local self projects, local self governments improved their services and contributed to their communities. There were um, uh, sewerage systems uh, built, uh, which improved the lives of 50, 529 inhabitants and uh, reduced the pollution of the environment by getting the uh, uh, waste waters directly to the collectors. Kursumlia, Dolyevac, Kucha, and Bosilegrad, their inhabitants have now healthy drinking water thanks to 14 um, kilometers of uh, waterworks, which was uh, reconstructed or built thanks to the intervention. 20% uh, of loss of water will be eliminated. In addition to this, better public utilities were ensured through the adaptation of the market in Alexinex, which ensured better conditions for their agricultural producers, but also the good governance um, uh, rules, rules of procedures ensured better income, improved energy efficiency of nine cultural centers in numerous municipalities and will ensure savings in operational costs and equal access for 19,700 users. But they adopted uh, a procedure to improve the use of space and the uh, procured equipment will uh, improve their offer uh, like the open uh, summer uh, scene in, um, in uh, Knyazhevac, which was visited by over 30,000 people. Improved uh, energy efficiency was contributed by uh, the replacement of uh, street lightning, uh, the savings and the budget which will be established through the center for measuring the uh, spending will um, be used for uh, the, the development of the economic and social development. Reconstructed kindergartens uh, in Prokuplia and Senica will ensure uh, energy efficient facilities uh, for children and employees. Um, we also reconstructed the kindergarten, that is the kitchen in uh, the kindergarten in Prokuplia, which will ensure food for three more kindergartens in this town. We rehabilitated the sports complexes, the children's playground in, in, in Dimitrovgrad, Batucin and Bobia Golubac, as well as the access ramp, which in, uh, allowed the access to uh, people with reduced mobility to the uh, uh, sports facilities, and it improved better development for uh, uh, over 50,000 users. Over 5,000 children and teachers will have better uh, conditions in schools uh, uh, in numerous towns, and over 10,000 people now have better conditions for health care in Jabari and Jagodit. A lot of work, a lot of projects and results, many challenges and new knowledges and good practices that which we will keep implementing. You all know that we have a new EU Pro, Pro Plus program. We believe that our successful cooperation will continue also in the future. And I hope we will continue seeing each other in the future successfully as until now.